By now, you're probably super familiar with the concept of quiet quitting. That was sort of the thing that started off, the idea that people are still at their jobs, but they're not trying to go above and beyond where they need to you know, do to maintain their job. And then quiet quitting led to grumpy staying and loud quitting and a, a whole bunch of stuff just intended to get people to click on articles. Um, but it's been a, it's been evolving so much that people might forget sort of where it started. This isn't like the first person who talked about quiet quitting, but one of the people who popularized the term was uh, Zaid Khan, who posted a TikTok video about it. Now says, you know, sometime later that the idea fills him with looming fear and existential dread. Had been working a remote tech job, wasn't feeling fulfilled or inspired by his career choice. He heard about quiet quitting as people first began whispering about it last year and decided to take part and pull back from work. But once Khan began doing the bare minimum at work, he noticed conflicting inner feelings that related to the privilege of being able to get away with underperforming in his under the radar role. He warns now that quiet quitting or jobless employment leads to the looming fear that you're gonna get found out and fired. And a broader existential dread of what am I actually doing with my life? I wanted to give him a chance to, to explain this a little bit. So why don't we jump to a bit of a, a recent TikTok. Despite being in this idyllic situation of being able to coast in my job, I still felt this hollowness inside of me. We've been so conditioned by capitalism to think that our worth has to derive from our jobs, from our labor. It would just be gnawing at me. Some of the common warriors were calling me a bootlicker for challenging the ability to coast at your job and for expressing even a morsel of a desire to have fulfillment in what you do for work. Bestie, trust me, if we weren't under the umbrella of capitalism, I wouldn't want to work either. I wouldn't want to frolic in a meadow. A lot of you are asking how I got out of that situation. And I'm probably not the best person to ask because I just fully up and quit my job. So look, I I don't know exactly where I stand on this whole thing, but I do like that he's willing to make this video knowing that a lot of people are gonna see this as like a betrayal of people who want to have a much more satisfying work life balance who feel like there has been good development in the relationship that people have with their work. But but I think that it is complicated. Like there's certainly an element of privilege in this, like like that you get to decide how much extra do plenty of jobs that I've worked, you do not get to decide. You have a long list of things that you have to do. But I but I get the the conflict, River, of you know, wanting to find fulfillment in all areas of your life. I, I don't like I want everyone to be able to pursue careers that they find personally fulfilling. And I'm not saying that it's a good thing to get like the only satisfaction in your life out of your job. But I also don't think that like us normalizing the idea that people should spend eight to 12 hours a day doing something that they fundamentally don't care about and that's sustainable. Nothing should change, they should just not care. I don't think that's good for anyone either. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I don't know. This is. <laughs> Very confusing to me because I'm just like I can't. I mean, to me, the the whole thing, uh, like all of it, it speaks more about uh, what kind of jobs are available right now. You know, like because we're we're always like we need jobs, we need jobs, we need jobs, and it's like yeah, but what jobs? Like, what are the jobs? You know, like the jobs are either you're sitting at a computer. Or you are a service worker. You're you're a UPS driver. You're it's sending food to people. You're making the food. You're putting it down on a table. You are stocking shelves. It's like mm -hmm. we don't have this uh, environment of holistic uh, care for each other within the work that we have the opportunity to do. I mean, even like you know, being a doctor because of like private healthcare and private insurance and all this stuff is not about caring for people. It's about filling out paperwork. When I go see my doctor, she is on a computer most of the time. You yeah. know, it's like there's just no, I think it's the thing is like, it's not about you and me and Zaid's idea. It's about this thing, like he said, the umbrella of this thing that invades all of our life. So for me, it's it's more about that and keeping the conversation about like, what what can our work be as yeah. opposed to, what can I do? You know, I mean, those are also that's part of it. But it's like, can I look outside of what's available to me now and see possibility for myself and other people to do something yeah. that that is in and of itself fulfilling that doesn't have to be clocked into? You know. 
I don't know if that like, answers the question. <laughs> no, I think I don't think there's a there's one question to be answered. I think yeah, that it's definitely. part of an ongoing continual reassessment of the relationship that different sorts of people have to get to have with their job. And the thing is like for a lot of people they might think, well, this is like super abstract compared to the things that I would like to see change in my job. I would like to be paid, you know, what I deserve. I would like to have the benefits that I deserve, which is definitely true, but I think that they are related topics. I think especially now when we see the rapid development of different forms of, you know, AI technology, they're going to affect a lot of jobs. We know that the people at the top have an idea of how that can reorganize everything. The question is gonna be to what extent do we get to say what effect we want that to have? It's going to lead to a lot of people losing their jobs. So the question is, is are then people just cast aside? Or would, do we use that as an opportunity to finally free up as many yeah. people as possible to pursue jobs that are satisfying? And I understand there's people in the chat that are like, well, why should your job be the thing you get satisfaction from? I personally think that you should get satisfaction from everything you're forced to do every <laughs> single day. Maybe that's a pipe dream, maybe it's a utopia, but I think that we can work towards that. No one should toil hours and hours a day for decades, hating every second of it. Because there's no way that that doesn't affect the other hours of your life. Like imagine coming home to your family, having enjoyed the time that you spent at work. It's all life. And that's why I think that it's worth sometimes talking about. Anyway, I, I mean, I, I agree, and that's why I'm like, if if it were up to me, we would have universal, uh, you know, basic income, because then we wouldn't have to worry about it, and we could do things. That's why I like to use the word work sometimes as opposed to job, because like my life's work is not limited to the jobs that I have, but those jobs have been part of that, you know, and it mm-hmm. allows. For me to, because uh, I, I was very concerned with like career for a long time, and I just don't really get down with that word anymore. And that's just me, you know. But um, I, sure. I think what it, it speaks, it's it's what you're saying, John, which is like there's more possibility in that that perhaps like the things we do can provide for ourselves and for others. And I think that yeah. is just much more open ended to me. And I I, I definitely. Do not believe that AI is gonna be used in a positive way, but if it could be, that is the way that I would want it to happen. Because I, I mean, we have already seen jobs, lot jobs, actual jobs lost to AI. I mean, go into yeah. a McDonald's, go into Walgreens, go into a, a bank. Like, how often do you talk to a person when you go to a bank? How often do you go to a bank? <laughs> like this <Yeah>. already happened. <laughs> It's already happening, you know, uh, and so people are being forced into further and further into this service industry that has now become the main job provider force in the country. And I yeah. just that's not sustainable, I don't think. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.